I'm Michael Carmody. I'm going to show you how to make a pizza. It's easy. You can do it yourself if you just follow these simple instructions. I use a stand mixer, but you can do this in a regular mixing bowl with a spoon if you like. Take one cup of warm water. It should be about 110 degrees, not much warmer. We're going to use this to reconstitute our dry yeast. I use rapid rise or bread machine yeast. It works faster and makes for a better pizza crust with less hassle. Add to your warm water about a teaspoon of honey. This will give the yeast something to eat when you wake it up from its sleep. Now stir it up. When all that honey be mixed in with the water uniformly here. There we go. There I've measured out one tablespoon of rapid rise active dry yeast. We're going to put it right in here in the water. Now I'm going to give it a little mix. Add as much of that yeast as possible come in contact with the warm water and the honey and those little yeast millions and millions of them in there will be waking up and coming back to life and eating that honey and reproducing and here in just a few minutes we're going to let this sit to proof you will see a foam coming out of the yeast and that lets you know that it's active and you can go on with the rest of your recipe. Oh yes, looky here. See all that foam there in the center? Keeps it getting bigger. That is a sign that the yeast is alive and active and working as it's supposed to. So now we can go on to the next stage in the recipe. Alright, now we add three tablespoons of olive oil. tablespoon of salt. I have kosher salt here. It doesn't matter. Now it's time to talk about flour for a second. Uh, pizza crust would be very nice and have kind of a chewy, stretchy feel to it and for that to happen it, the, the flour needs to have a lot of gluten in it. Gluten is the starch part of the wheat nugget and uh, w when you have a lot of it you end up with a stretchier softer dough. When you have less of it, you end up with a crumblier, coarser dough. So we have the option of either using a bread flour, which has more gluten in it naturally, or a regular all-purpose flour with the addition of gluten, which you can buy in your bakery department at most grocery stores. Now if I were going to use this flour, the all-purpose, I would add three tablespoons of this wheat gluten. I think that's what I'm going to do. But you can also just as well buy just bread flour and use it. It will do the job just as well and you won't have to add any gluten. Alright, since we've opted to use the all-purpose flour, we're going to add first about a cup of it. This is two and a half cups. We're going to add about the first cup or so in there. And the three tablespoons of gluten, as we talked about. And I'm going to put on my dough hook. Lower it in here and start mixing. You may want to take a, your wooden spoon or have a plastic one in this case and make sure that all the flour is getting down there in the mix. And we have to just Keep adding flour two or three more batches until it's all used up. You may not have to use all of it. Things like the humidity actually affect this. When this is mixed like it's supposed to, it will start to pull into a ball all together. See it's starting to happen now here. Oops. Yeah, 
nice. This is still just a little wet yet. You want it to be a little more of a ball than that. I'm going to add a little more here. It's flour. I'm just going to go ahead and put all that in. It's going to be just about right, I bet you. Yeah, look what we have here now. Nice ball of dough. I'll let this go a little more here. And then pull it out here in a second. Make sure it's all uniformly mixed. Ah, oh, now that's a ball of dough. One nice lump like that. There's our ball of dough. Like almost any kind of bread dough, you want to knead it some. I have to hold the camera with one hand. I'll show you the basic technique. You do this with two hands. Turn it 90 degrees. Give it a nice smash. 90 degrees. A nice smash. And you don't need to do this as much with pizza dough as you do with uh, like bread dough. It's just a couple minutes of this will help get that gluten work through there nicely. I'm going to give this a couple minutes. There we go. I've kneaded it a couple minutes. Now I'm going to let it sit back here in the bowl for about 10 minutes and just let it rest. We'll come back to it in 10 minutes time and make our pizza. Turn your oven to 400 degrees now. You'll need to give it time to warm up. Now we take some spray oil and gently coat our pizza pan. You don't have to go too crazy, just get just a little light skim coat on there so that our dough doesn't stick. Now we're going to take our dough ball, if I can get a hold of it over here, put it right down the middle of that, we're going to start flattening it out. Like I said, I'm using one hand to hold the camera, so I'll set it down here in a minute, but Essentially, you just keep pushing and scooting it out to the edges as uniformly as you can until you get it all the way out to the edge of the pan. There we go. Now, you see, the whole pan is covered with crust evenly. Now, we start working on getting our sauce and our toppings on there. Alright, here's what we're doing today. I happen to be a fan of both Canadian bacon and pepperoni. We're going to use some commercial pizza sauce. You can use just spaghetti sauce. You can make your own sauce from tomato paste and herbs. You can do whatever kind of sauce you want. I prefer a mix of Italian cheeses like this, already pre shredded, but you can use just straight mozzarella. You can add in parmesan, whatever you like, provolone. However you want to top it, if you want to put onions, black olives, it doesn't matter. Whatever you like, it's your pizza, top it the way you like. I usually find that about four big spoonfuls will cover an average crust to the amount of sauce that I like personally. You can use more, you can use less, whatever to your taste. Again, this is your pizza, you make it how you like it. Nobody else has to eat it. They can make their own damn pizza if they don't like it. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get it evenly covered over the whole crust as much as you can. Alright, looking good. Now I'm going to start adding pepperoni. And me personally, I like to cover the whole pie with pepperoni. Again, your pizza, do it how you like. Boom, look at that. Now I'm going to hit it with the Canadian bacon. Ooh, look at that. I didn't have enough to totally cover it, but that's probably just about enough meat anyway. Now, it's time to cheese it up. Check it out. Now this is an 8 ounce bag of cheese shreds. You may choose to use more or less cheese to your taste. That is completely and entirely up to you. Just try to make sure you get it even across the surface of the pizza or it'll have lumpy spots where it doesn't get done quite right. You want any bald spots on your pizza? Oh yeah, look at that. It's starting to look like a pizza pie, isn't it kids? 
All right. There's one more thing. I, I, I've got it. Hey, what's a pizza without Italian herbs? I'm going to hit this with some dried basil and oregano. In the summertime, when I can get it, I use a lot of fresh basil for pizzas. That's very nice. This will have to do. We're out of season, and, uh, you know, it's what I have on hand, and it will still be delicious. Mm, there, now we've got a nice coating of basil and oregano on there. Uh, that's the stuff. That's going to taste really nice. So here we are now. Now all we have to do is put it in the oven. We're going to let that cook for 10, 12 minutes, maybe 15 on the outside. You want to check in once in a while. Alright, let's take a look at our pizza. Oh yeah. Look at that. Beautiful pizza pie. Right there. Very nice. The cheese is just getting golden brown. Like the crust underneath, it's just nice, just starting to turn a little golden brown too. It's exactly what we want to see. Now just let it cool off a couple minutes, slice the handy pizza cutter, and enjoy.